it's time for your daily dose of all things Chicago sports. This is the Daily Score. Now, here's your host, Mark Grody. Hello, everybody. Getting ready for Bears and the Commanders on Thursday Night Football. And it happened for the first time at Hallis Hall on Wednesday. For the first time, the collective media at Hallis Hall was asking questions to Matt Eberflus, the Bears head coach, that pertained to his job security, which may be starting to lighten a little. Um, you know, that's the nature of the gig. You have now lost 15 straight games. Wait, did I get that right? Let's see, 11 last year, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yep, Bears have lost 15 straight games. So at some point in time, no matter what you're going through, when I say going through a rebuild where you're not necessarily expected to be a playoff team this year, but that many losses is just a devastating number to a franchise. So let's start right there, and I'll give you the lead up to some of the, the money questions to Matt Eberflus about his gig. And uh, it begins with Matt Eberflus talking about the fact that, you know, hey, got to win this game, you're 0-4. How important is it to win this game to not be looking at the mini buy at 0-5? Yeah, it's it's important, right? All of them are important. You know, so we're putting everything into this, all of our energy, you know, all of our, uh, you know, passion into it because it takes all that. It takes all of our, all of our focus uh, to get this done. And the guys are wired in. And, uh, you know, we just, uh, when I named TJ the captain out there, we had a really good talk with the team about, hey, let's go get this thing done. It's going to get done with determination. And there's going to be adversity in the game, uh, he said. And he said, we got to get this done. And we got to do it together. Matt, are, are you aware of the heat that's on you right now and the outside noise about your job security and things like that at, time, at a time like this? You know, in this business, you know, you've been, I've been doing this 32 years, right? So I, I understand the business, but I understand that to do it right, you got to focus on your job and you got to focus right here, right now. So you can think about a lot of different things that's going to do nobody good. And uh, you focus on your job where your feet are right now. And that's my full, uh, sole focus is on Washington. And, you know, Flus went on to be questioned too from, you know, in terms of, what is the support from your bosses? And he said that he feels like he does have support from them. My guess is if the Bears do lose to the game against Washington, he will not get fired. I just think, you know, and we went through all of this, you know, last year too, and we've gone through it before in terms of firing co with Matt Nagy, I should say when we thought he might get fired in season, the bears have never fired a coach in season. And I do think that there is some, you know, it's not just coincidence. I don't think, but you do have Kevin Warren there, but I don't think that he necessarily is ready to fire a head coach. You know I mean? Like he's, he's been here, you know, not even a year yet, obviously. So I don't know if that's something that he's ready to do as of yet. I think they still, support him for now doesn't mean he won't get canned at the end of the season i think they support him for now and hate to use this word but i think they support the process for now and that could change in season that could change at the end of the season um one thing that happened at hallis hall is that nate davis who did return to play last week at right guard after missing all that time due to personal issues and quite frankly dealing with the death of a loved one really hasn't spoken to us much and we've respected that privacy but he did um decide to speak to us and he opened up a little bit about some of the stuff that's been going on with him personally play on the guys uh this is a great team uh these guys have really just been there for me during the tough time especially um that's really all I can say, leaving my family, my teammates, and taking one day at a time. How am I doing? Uh, you know, I feel okay, uh, as good as I can. You know, it really just goes back to one day at a time. It's definitely not easy, but, you know, I feel as good as I can. Is it hard in a neat place where, you know, I mean, you just got here, and, and I know you know the guys, but yeah. it may be a different relationship than you'd have with everybody if you'd been here a couple of years. Yeah, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, uh, be able to, you know, leave my family still and these teammates. We spend a lot of time with each other regardless, so... Uh, they understand me. They understand what I'm going through. Um, and, you know, they really helped out a lot for sure. 
have you or what have you learned about like being mentally right to be able to play a game like football? Uh, there's no clear cut answer to that. Um, everyone handles it differently. Um, for me, it's just being able to talk to the guys, talk to my family. And, you know, like I've really been saying, just taking one day at a time because, you know, it's, it's tough for sure. What were, your you what were your interactions like with coaches and, and trying to determine that? Uh, just support. Um, just being able to really just air out everything I'm feeling and them being, um, uh, you know, just taking it all in too and giving me the right approach and telling me the right things too. So, um, yeah, you know. I'm really grateful for this team uh, just being there for me for everything. From the outside, people were like, where is this guy? Wait, I mean, did you hear that, and did, did you, what did you think of that? I, guess. Uh, I try to stay on social media as much as possible. Uh, you guys were definitely on me for sure. But uh, at the same time, I knew that, you know, what I had going on in my life was personal. I try to keep it that way um, and, you know, to do the best I can to feel when I was there. Appreciate Nate Davis opening up, and he played really well last week, so – Joked with him that, oh, you're the reason why the offense was finally clicking. And of course, he, you know, said, no, it's everybody and all that kind of stuff. But he knew I was joshing. Um, Tevin Jenkins has been practicing all week, so I got a good feeling that he'll play. Um, TJ Edwards, you heard Matt Eberflus reference him as the honorary captain and that he spoke to the team and was apparently uh, pretty inspiring. So I asked TJ about that. I mean, honestly, just, just speaking from the heart, um, I'm just excited for this team for – Another opportunity, man. I feel like um, did some really good things last week, and um, we learned a lot about this group and how we responded this week. Just coming in and um, getting right back to work. So we're excited, man. And uh, yeah, it's a it's a blessing to be you know uh, um, walking out on that field with them, and um, we're excited, ready to go. How hard of a start has this been for you guys, zero and four? I mean, yeah, that's you know it's tough, um, but it, again, we get to find out a lot about um, who we are as you know people and who we are as a team. And um, when these things, these tough times come you got to find a way to, to get through them. And um, honestly, we're just having our adversity happen a little early. And, and it might be for the best, for sure. Coming to fruition, for sure. Is it kind of like you get the bad stuff out of the way early? Uh, I mean, you never you never want bad stuff in general. But um, if it's going to happen, I think, you know, this group is, is learning from these things very quickly and understanding that uh, we're putting some good things on film and things like that. So it's just, you know, learning from uh, the bad and, and making them in a good and also continuing to do the things that we're doing well, just do them and be consistent. He needs a big game. TJ Edwards right there. He needs some sort of splash. You know, a couple of TFLs maybe, a sack, a pick, force fump, you know, just something. Just just put – got to put TJ Edwards on the map. I don't feel like he's on the Bears map as of yet. Last guy that we're going to hear from right now is DJ Moore, and he had a great vibe by his locker today. I felt something today with DJ Moore because there was positivity coming out. And he was acting like a very confident man. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like, after talking to him today, I felt like maybe the Bears are going to win. There's like a coolness about them here on the Wednesday as we're recording this. But here's DJ Moore on what a win would mean, what it would do. <laughs> Shoot, it would bring sunshine to a cloudy, cloudy day. Uh, so that's what we're hunting for. Uh, we're on the brink of it, so... Just got to push through it. How is, how is that vibe right now? Everybody's still in uh, good hopes, uh, high hopes. So, I mean, nobody seems down and, uh, like, chucking the season up. So, ready to see what we, we get, get – uh, man, ready to see what we can do uh, going down the stretch and uh, turn this thing around. Yeah, I mean, I like that. I like the way there was a cool and calm and captain vibe Coming out of DJ Moore, who had almost had 100 yards by halftime last week. So we'll see if it, if any of that stuff is repeatable. Last year on in that primetime game, was it was Thursday night last year too, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, the Bears lost to Washington 12-7 to just for fun. Dante Pettis had four catches and 84 yards. Oh, Dante Pettis. Carson Wentz, I told you guys about him yesterday. He was 12-22 uh, for 99 yards. I was right. I was right. He didn't have 100 yards in that game even. Fields had a decent game, 190 yards, touchdown, a pick, and 88 yards rushing. He had a pretty bad pick, if I remember, late in the in the first half. And that was a muffed punt by Bayless Jones Jr. game as well. Brian Robinson with a one-yard touchdown run. So, Cleveland Herbert also had a 64-yard run last year. Fair to look at stuff from last year because – 
you know, it wasn't that long ago. Rosters changed, but there's a similar core um, in both teams. So uh, that is it. That is it. Um, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I will talk to you soon. For Ray Diaz, our executive producer, I am Mark Grody for The Daily Score.